This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. We are at Ramirez Pecan Farms in Clint, Texas. This is part of our third installment of Small Town Spotlight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Monica Cortez. And I'm Carla Draxler. Thank you so much for joining us here in Clint, Texas. We have some of our community audience. back here. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, guys, and for uh, bringing us here and for having us with such open hearts. Yeah. Uh, we love it here. This is, like you said, our third small town spotlight. Uh, first, we were in Tornillo, mm -hmm. then in Fabens, uh, you and Andy, and now we're, we're here in Clint. In Clint. And you know what? They've been welcoming us with open arms. We actually got to try some with the pecan food. pie. Oh, Robert ate our so pie. so good. <laughs> yeah, Robert <laughs> ate our he pie, ate and he our just prop. left it there. <laughs> But you know what? It was so delicious. We even got to taste pecan ice cream. I have never. Do you guys like pecan ice cream? Yes. Pecan, yeah, that's yes. good stuff. So good stuff. It is so it delicious. It was amazing. And you know what? I think the weather has served us well, too. It's so nice now with the little breeze. Yeah, it's, it's been perfect. perfect. Although I will say it is a little hot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. But <laughs> I guess. 90s. I guess. Uh, It'll, it'll get a little chillier in the couple next minutes. I hope so, as that sun begins to slowly set. But Robert Bettis is standing by. Robert, what can you tell us as far as what the weather's going to be like for tonight and the rest of the work week? Well, Monica, <laughs> I'm super charged up on Ramirez Pecan Farm. Delicious actual yeah. pecan pie. Joining me in my fantastic infinity, the one, the only, Bobby Bone, keeping us right on time. Of course, in the luxurious back seat, Charlie Clock. Absolutely. That much chance, everybody. It's great to be here with oh, you, Robert. You're comfortable Hello. back there, gentlemen. It's going to be windy tonight. Wind gusts over 40 miles per hour at times as a little cool front slides in for Thursday. I'm going to have your detailed forecast. We'll talk about how much cooler. We're also going to thank Charlie Clark for making the small town spotlight happen. And I want to treat you right, guys. We're going to go inside to the Ramirez Pecan Farm and we're going to do a little shopping. Sound good? All right. Back to you. Carla, Monica? <laughs> Uh, it always seems like Robert is having a blast. Yeah, of course, because he ate our pie. I know. Of I course know, he's right? having a blast. He's having a whole sugar <laughs> rush right now. I feel like that <sighs> is the case. But you know what? Before we get into all the amazing things that Clint has to offer, we want to get to the news of the day. That's right. And we find our Shelby Cap uh, there in the studio. Shelby, take it away. Thank you, Carla and Monica. We begin with developing news. Two people are in the hospital after a pedestrian crash in Horizon. Horizon police say it happened around 1030 this morning on the intersection of Horizon and Darrington. Officials say an off duty officer was conducting traffic control before being hit by an SUV. Both the driver and the off duty officer were taken to the hospital for medical evaluation. And the Sunland Park Fire Department search and rescue assisting two people who called 911 for help. According to fire officials, the two people were rescued in the desert area off Tierra Madre Court in Sunland Park, New Mexico. Just in the last month of May, the Sunland Park Fire Department had eight body recoveries in and around the area. Now, KTSM 9 News reporter Skylar Soto spoke with officials in Sunland Park and Juarez and will bring us more on the story at 630. And the El Paso fire officials are investigating the cause of a fire at an apartment complex. This happened in downtown El Paso on McGoffin and Noble. Luckily, no injuries were reported, but fire officials do tell us that five tenants had to be evacuated due to that fire. No other details have been released. Stay with KTSM for updates. And let's go ahead and take a look at our tech stock cameras to get a look at some traffic. You're looking at I-10 and US-54. It looks pretty clear this Wednesday evening here. Doesn't look like much will be slowing you down. Now you're looking at I-10 and Reynolds. Same thing. Looks like traffic is flowing smoothly. And Sun Metro will resume regular service for the El Paso streetcar starting today. As you may remember, the streetcar service was temporarily suspended early May so that the city could respond to the migrant crisis near Sacred Heart Church. Regular hours are 3 to 10 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday. And on Sunday, the streetcar runs from noon to 6 p.m. Now, there is no service on Monday and Tuesday, and the streetcar rides are free. Now, that's the news of the day. Let's go ahead and send things back to Monica and Carla, who are in Clint. 
Hey Shelby, thank you so much. And you know what? We've been having such a great time. This awesome is Amita's time. Pecan Farms. Yes. And I've learned so much about pecans. I've learned that uh, the dessert, the staple dessert of Texas is pecan Is pecan pie, pie of mm -hmm. course. The we tree have some of here. the state tree is pecan trees. I makes mean, sense. Yeah, Clint, it makes sense to grow them right here in Clint, Texas. Absolutely. It is so amazing. And so we've learned there's a pecan ice cream, pecan pies, pecan you shakes, milkshakes. Oh, shakes. look at them. That's yeah. okay. Robert's bite Robert, right yeah, there. That's right why there. it looks like that. <laughs> but so, so delicious. The ice cream, I could not believe <gasps> Neither. it. Neither. I thought it was going to be a little too sweet, but no, it no. is perfect. And, the, and it there was great. little chunks of pecans. Yes. So yeah, if you want to try <laughs> local so pecans, Ram Ramirez Pecan Farm is the place to go yeah. here in Clint. Local but yield. we have Tawny Davis standing by. She actually talked to the owner of uh, Ramirez Pecan Farms, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about it. Hey there, Tawny. Hey there, Carla and Monica. The Ramirez Pecan Farm has become this community's place to enjoy those delicious pecan products where the Ramirez family boasts quality over quantity. Ramirez Pecan Farms has become a staple in the Clint area. Started by Guadalupe Ramirez, he wanted to create a place he could pass on to his children. Now in its second generation, the farm continues to live on. My dad still wanted to go back into our agriculture. He asked the family, we've had a little, uh, um, a little meeting, and he said if that's something we wanted to do, and I said yeah, and it's something I, would, I was interested in. So yeah, we, we went through the venture. Throughout the pecan farm, you are welcome to all kinds of pecan desserts. From maple butter pecan ice cream, pecan pie, candy pecans, and fresh cookies, breads, and cakes, Ramirez Farms wants to give quality products to the community. It's not about throwing a whole bunch of stuff that we want to give good quality, simple, uh, simple ingredients, but it's uh, the love that goes into it. Wanting to emphasize the importance of supporting a small business, Ramirez and his family make sure everyone who comes to visit them is appreciated. You'll see me running around. You'll see my, my kids running around. You'll see my dad running around. I mean, we'll, and we'll thank you. We appreciate everybody. And it's it just the appreciation you're going to get from knowing that you're helping another small uh, family-owned business. If you would like to make your way over to Ramirez Pecan Farm, you could find all that information on our website, ktsm.com. I'm Tawny Davis. I'm going to send it right back to you guys. Thank you so much, Tani. Well, you can see a little aspect of what Clint makes Clint so amazing. Exactly. And to talk more about Clint, Texas, is joining us Mayor Ramon Cano. Thank yes. you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, you know, okay, so question. What made you run for mayor? Well, you know, it was my family and my kids. I wanted Clint to be a place where my family and my kids can grow up here, uh, be safe, have place, uh, things to do. And what better way of doing that than being the mayor of the town? So that's why I chose to run for my family. Oh, that's that is amazing. awesome. And how long have you been living here? I've been living here for about four years now. Uh, I lived in Sanelli before that. Oh, okay, so very close. Very close. But tell me, what makes Clint so special? You know what, I think it's the people that live here. We have a lot of people that have roots here. You know, there are third or fourth generations that live here. Uh, just the openness of the farms, but you also have a little bit of the you know city um, aspects of it. And so it's just a great community to live in. I love that. We love it. We so, felt so welcome yeah. here. Everyone's out here. We even had the local police cheering <laughs> us on. We, it was so awesome. It's and amazing. The, the food. The food the is food. delicious. And you know, just to think about how you say about the people here and your family do you guys have any traditions that keep Clint so unique I think it's our schools the football games our uh, homecoming uh, it's, it's just amazing the homecoming parade everything is just amazing everybody comes together to support our, our teams and so I think that's a really good tradition that we have Awesome. And is there any kind of a message that you would like to send? You maybe you know people at El Paso. We don't really come down here. Kind of an invitation that you would like to. Definitely, we have a lot of open space farms. Uh, this location here is amazing. I mean, they should uh, come on by and stop by, and there's just a lot to see and do here. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank Mary. you so much for joining us. Awesome. Yeah, there's definitely lots to do, mm -hmm. lots to eat. But one of the places that you might want to actually visit here is the San Lorenzo Church here in Clint. We had uh, our Tawny Davis uh, presented in the 5 p.m. newscast, but uh, we'll take a look at another part of the story. Take a look. 
It makes me feel really great knowing that I can serve God and the community of Clint because as I'm up there, I can encourage the Clint community to serve along with us. You get this feeling of like fulfillment and enlightenment while you're up there, knowing that you're serving God and Father and of course your community of Clint. It makes you feel warm inside that your, your community is here to honor God and to serve Mass with you. I just walked in and made a donation to the, the church and then I lit a candle for my prayers. And then I came over here and started praying for my family and me to keep me safe for my life. And that's basically all what people do and come here to pray and pray for their family. They pray for they pray for God through San Lorenzo. It's a fun experience. You get to work with Father Enrique, you get to work with all the servers of the church. You also get to meet new people and tell them about your experiences and also you can invite them to our church and also invite them to help. Such a beautiful church. Well, don't go anywhere. We have a lot more to share with you right after this break, including Robert Bettis with the, his friends at Charlie Cut. That's right. <laughs> Local Weather Authority. 
Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist. Mm, I am so glad the small town spotlight has taken us to Glint, Texas. Mm. I did not know that you could make carrot cake out of pecans. So delicious. Look at this beautiful little shop right here at Ramirez Pecan Farm. It's gorgeous. Outside, it's a little windy. So here comes your forecast. Here comes your exclusive nine hour forecast for Thursday. We're going to start out windy in the morning. Leftover winds from tonight's gusty winds. High temperatures tomorrow will be cooler as a little cool front comes in for Thursday. High temperature 89 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Here are the high temperatures so far today. Alabagordo at 91, 87 Deming, 95 for Juarez and 94 for Van Horn. A look at the satellite radar composite. All the thunderstorm activity is in eastern New Mexico and over the panhandle of Texas. We are bone dry and we're going to stay dry for days to come. Winds are going to get quite strong in the night tonight, gusting to over 40 miles per hour, especially right there on the eastern slopes of the mountains as that cool front comes in this evening. That's good news for our allergy forecast. We'll peak tomorrow at 5.7 before coming down. Across the nation tomorrow, here's what you can expect. Thunder showers, Florida along the Gulf Coast, flooding possible in the Panhandle and Oklahoma, flooding as well, Montana, but we're going to be sunny with winds to about 30 miles per hour. We'll call that moderately windy and cooler for our Thursday. 59 tonight, Alabagordo, 60 Deming, 70 for Juarez. Highs tomorrow, 87 Alabagordo, 85 Deming, 89 Juarez, and 90 for Van Horn. Tonight, Las Cruces, 65, your low temperature with a few clouds and gusty winds. Windy tomorrow, moderately so, with a high temperature of 87 degrees. Tonight at the airport, 70, gusty winds winds stronger on the eastern slopes of the mountains. 89 hour cooler high temperature for tomorrow with moderate winds to 30 miles per hour. Only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. The winds calm down on Friday with a high temperature of 90. 92 Saturday only partly cloudy on Sunday at 93. A chance of isolated storms after a hot 97 on Monday. Widely scattered thunder showers Tuesday with the best chance of rain and then we dry out in the low 90s when Wednesday through Friday. Ha! All right, right next to me, Bobby Bone, right here, Charlie Clark. Orale. And you, sir, what is your name? Bobby. No, that is not possible to have a Bobby. Bobby? But there's another connection I'm going to ask you. Who secretly is this man right the here? The Green Ghost. <laughs> are, are you 100% sure that is he? Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, this young man That's down here, Charlie Clark, has another connection to you, well, doesn't actually, he? Well, uh, actually, this is such a cool young man. He won the Orale Contest. He won the Orale Contest for the best Orale online. And guess what did you do with the money? I bought medicine for my dad and bought clothes. He oh. bought a medicine. That is smart. You, Bobby. That Hey, Bobby, by the way, yes. see what's in that shop. Oh, I want You're going to Yeah, yes, yeah. Go, oh, yeah. That's what it's all about. I it's about it. he loves his dad more than he loves money. That's small town America. I love it. What do you think about these small town spots? No, I'm telling you, I'm I'm honored. I, I'm so glad that we decided to do this with you because to me, I felt I felt the, this this wonderful sense of peace coming out here, and well, and now a piece of pie. <laughs> no, <laughs> but <laughs> but I mean honestly, to come out here on a yeah. Sunday afternoon or something to have a piece of pie and coffee. Uh, uh, or I don't know if it's Sunday, but during the week, Monday through yeah, Saturday. Yeah, they're closed on Sunday, Sunday but every right. other day. So every other day, I mean, they've got this great patio out here covered with all these beautiful pecan trees out here. It's amazing. I mean, there's such well, a great spirit We'd like here. to say thank you to Charlie yeah, Clark for all of your sponsorship of these small yeah, town spots. Some, right here, we got some cinnamon frosted pecans. Oh, oh well, thank you. Cinnamon frosted pecans. Fantastic, sir. There's, there. look, ask him at the counter for the, the, the free step over there. Okay, Charlie, thank you. Bobby, thank you so hey, much Bobby, for your, so much, man. your excellent uh, gift to your dad. Boom. That's Small Town America. That's why we're doing the Small Town Spotlight. We'll be right back. Orale.
Like KTSM 9 News on Facebook. Putting local first. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen Bias and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Welcome back to the Ramirez Pecan Farm in Clint, Texas for our small town showcase here, or small town spotlight, excuse me, on KTSM. And Clint, over the years, uh, has had plenty of very fantastic sports programs. Their basketball team made the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago. Their football team has had plenty of runs in the playoffs as well. But you have to look at their baseball team as well. And in the recent years, EJ Miramontes, he went to the junior college level out of high school, but he has parlayed that into a Division I scholarship at UTRGV next year. And Sam Guzman has more on his story. I dreamed of it like as a little kid, and uh, now that I'm here working my way to it, I'm just thankful to be able to keep the dream alive. The dream of playing Division One college baseball is set to come true for EJ Miramonte. Next is I'm transferring to UTRGV, so I'll be playing out there in the Valley in Edinburgh, Texas. So I'm excited about that. For the 2024 season, the product out of Clint High School will suit up for UTRGV, a program where several ball players from the borderland have had success. The opportunity came after Miramontes showed out at New Mexico Junior College last season. He had a 7-0 record on the mound and collected 67 strikeouts and 64 innings pitched. That led to Miramontes earning a spot on the All-Western Junior College Athletic Conference first team. It was just trying to do the best I can to be able to get out. You know, We're there for, for a reason to use JUCO as a stepping stone. I tried my best at, at being able to do that. Now, Miramontes looks forward to stepping up to the next level in hopes he can one day be an example for the next generation of ball players out of Clint. I'm thankful for the opportunity and I just hope other kids that are from Clint or smaller schools can look back and say and think that it's possible. Sam Guzman, KTSM 9 Sports. Three, two. Thank you, Sam. Now to a story we brought to you last night at 10 p.m. following multiple violent events, including a deadly shooting involving a former New Mexico State men's basketball player. The basketball rivalry series between NMSU and New Mexico could be in jeopardy for the upcoming season. The concerns come after the series was canceled last year on the heels of former Aggie basketball player Mike Peake being involved in a deadly self-defense shooting in Albuquerque with four UNM students. Before he agrees to play games at the Pan American Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico Athletic Director Eddie Nunez says he wants a written plan from NMSU detailing how NMSU will beef up security for future games at the Pan Am. Until he gets one, he says he won't schedule any men's basketball games at the Pan American Center. Now, NMSU officials responded for the first time regarding the matter today, saying that police chiefs for NMSU and UNM have spoken multiple times to discuss the safety and security measures, and the NMSU chief planned to talk to Nunez today as well. In a statement, the school said in part, quote, we know these games mean a lot to the people of New Mexico. Unfortunately, we're not sure what the holdup has been on getting these matchups scheduled. Our personnel have nation national level training, and our game management processes meet industry standards for events of this magnitude. We're hopeful We'll be able to see our friends from Albuquerque in Las Cruces later this year, end quote. Now, for the full story, including a statement from Eddie Nunez, the UNM Athletic Director, you can head to our website, ktsm.com. Elsewhere in college basketball, Burgess graduate Tristan Newton will return to UConn for his final season of college eligibility. Newton went through the NBA draft process over the last month but didn't get the assurance he'd be selected, so he's coming back to the Huskies instead after helping lead them, of course, to the 2023 National Championship. Newton was the leading scorer in the title game win over San Diego State with 19 points and 10 rebounds. And finally, on the gridiron, Conference USA releasing its television schedule for the upcoming college football season. Both UTEP and New Mexico State will be featured prominently on national TV. The Miners will play a minimum of eight games on national TV on ESPN and CBS Sports Network, while the Aggies will play at least five games on national TV, including their season opener versus UMass on August 26th on ESPN. That game is the first NMSU home game to be broadcast on ESPN since 2007. For a full look at the schedules, head to our website, KTSM. Even better, though, we look at all these pies oh, and cookies goodness. and cakes. Yeah. Robert, what now. did you bring? You know, I've taken a lot. <laughs> okay, all right. So I want to give back oh, to the, the pecan pie. Right. It's got whipped cream on the bottom. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> he got it all over his We're fingers. Monica it. had it in her I hair the other day. I'm sorry, I've gotten it in her We <laughs> had so much pecan pie today. We so had a wonderful delicious. time here yeah. in Clint. From Mamacitas. Yes, the, the tacos. People. Look at all these wonderful people. Look I'm going to get down so you can see all of them. Look at that. Ramirez Thank Picafon. you. Yes, this has been such a beautiful oh. town. I really love it. We loved it. And, you know, our small town spotlight continues. continues. We'll be around El Paso County next and everywhere Wednesday. else next Wednesday as well. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here at 10. Yay. Yay. Hair, makeup, and men's grooming sponsored by 